poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. The, 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 the intro king. What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers Global. Welcome to the Mike Powers Show. Your first time on the channel. Thank you for clicking this video. If you didn't forget the thumbnail already, then you know I'm here to talk about Kanye West or better yet, black folks connection to this whole controversy swirling around Kanye West. Now we all know what he said to get quote unquote canceled. It seems like it's been months and months of just Kanye going off the deep end or better yet, it's been years, right? So let's get around to the thing that finally got him canceled. Speaking out loud about what he views as a cabal of Jewish individuals that run the world, run media, and is somehow now bullying him. I'm not here to get into the facts of the case about who owns what and whether or not these particular people that run these industries actually play fair. I'm here to talk about black folk hyper willingness to cape for this dude. Because of course, if a black man's getting shouted down over freedom of speech issues, it makes sense to defend him, especially an icon like Kanye West. Unless you just completely ignore all the things that Kanye did himself that were destructive to black people. Did you forget? So I officially gave Kanye the double birds when he did that song and dance inside the Oval Office for 45. I'm not here to tell you how to vote, Democrat or Republican. But when black folks is online talking about we need to defend this guy, let's talk about what he's done to harm black folks and why tap dancing for 45 was one of those things. First of all, in case we forgot, Donald Trump made his foray into politics doing things like this. And I just say very simply, why doesn't he show his birth certificate? Why has he spent over $2 million in legal fees to keep this quiet and to keep this silent. Exactly. Questioning Barack Obama's birth certificate, saying that he wasn't really born in America, that he was born in Kenya, which is the otherism thing that Republicans like to do. Republicans always need a boogeyman. Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States, gets elected in 2008. And soon thereafter, Donald Trump rose up to challenge the man's citizenship. This country was already primed to hate Muslims after 9-11. Barack Obama happens to be a Christian, but the name sounds Muslim. So Donald Trump takes that and creates a brand new conspiracy theory and becomes the chief birther. Going around the country, giving speeches, talking about he's sending people to Hawaii to investigate this man's papers. That a black man needs to provide his papers to Donald Trump to prove that he was born in this country. In fact, he was born in Hawaii. That was the thing that broadened his appeal to this political audience that we now call MAGA. Because for so long, after we passed the Voting Rights Act, every year after that, it became more difficult for white folks to call you the N-word in public. Then they had to use buzzwords. They had to keep it underneath the surface. And after all that time, now someone comes along and says, nah, fuck that. We're going to call Mexicans rapists and criminals, and we're going to say that this guy named Barack Hussein Obama wasn't really born here. That if you believe Barack Obama wasn't born in America, then that means that he's not qualified to be president of the United States of America, which means his presidency is illegitimate, which is what Donald Trump was saying for four years or eight years. That the first black presidency was not a legitimate one. So Kanye goes into the Oval Office and tap dances for this guy, wearing a red hat, talking about, I love this man. For what? Even before that, Trump was neck deep in racist rhetoric, all the way back to 1989. A well-educated black has a tremendous advantage over a well-educated white in terms of the job market. And I think sometimes a black may think that they don't really have the advantage or this or that, but in actuality, today, currently, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great, I've said on occasion, even about myself, if I were starting off today, I would love to be a well-educated black because I really believe they do have an actual advantage today. But that's Kanye's heroes. And again, I'm not here to tell you to vote Democrat or Republican. I'm talking about this particular guy and the people that go to his rallies. Do you think these people would invite you to the cookout? All y'all people that would like to vote for Donald Trump? How many of these people is going to jump up and march next to you if an innocent black man or woman gets killed by the police? You think you can go into their neighborhood and make it out alive? Ask Ahmaud Arbery, ask Trayvon Martin. Those people that voted for Trump, do you think they think George Zimmerman should go to jail or do you think Trayvon got what he deserved? This goes for Ice Cube and Lil Wayne too, out there caping for Donald Trump. Coincidentally, after the 2020 election, Donald Trump had some challenges. He thought it was some fraud going on. And you know where he thought the fraud was? Philadelphia, Atlanta, Detroit, Milwaukee, 
all happen to be places with a high population of black people. Keep going around saying that the 2020 election was stolen. Him and his supporters thought that black people cheated in order to get Joe Biden elected. This guy that Kanye was caping for thinks all black people are cheaters. And what did he say about he didn't want black people counting his money? Donald Trump said, quote, black guys counting my money? I hate it. The only kind of people I want counting my money are short guys that wear yarmulkes every day. Those are the kind of people I want counting my money. No one else. You talk about all the things that he was going to do about Chicago and all the crime that was taking place in Chicago. What did he do? Did he go to Chicago? Did he go to the South Side? Did he go talk to the people, community leaders? Did he go talk to the gangbangers? Did he go into the jail? Did he find out what the root cause of all this violence is that's going on in places like Chicago and Philly? No, we just talked about it. Because Chicago ain't no place that he wanted to help. Chicago is just a boogeyman. But Kanye was on board with that. And then Kanye came out and said, When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. Slavery was a choice. Then he showed up with Candace Owens wearing a White Lives Matter shirt. Now let's talk about White Lives Matter. Let's talk about Black Lives Matter. Now some of you is going to look at this and say, but BLM is a faulty organization that steals their donations and the lady bought a mansion with it. I'm not talking about the organization. I never gave money to an organization. I'm talking about the words themselves, Black Lives Matter. Do you agree or do you not? Implied in that statement is Black Lives Matter too. Why do we say that? White Lives Matter has never been a question in this country. But black lives have always been in question. The value of the black life has always been in question. And so when we reach a tipping point with so many unarmed black people being murdered by police and not being held accountable, somebody had to say out loud, black lives matter. And the phrase white lives matter and the phrase all lives matter is a racist direct rebuttal of the idea that black lives indeed matter. So when you wear that shirt, Kanye West, who are you supporting? Who's running around here saying white lives don't matter? For you to have to jump out the window. Meanwhile, you were the same guy that said this. George Bush doesn't care about black people. What happened to that guy? He went from this. I hate the way they portray us in the media. If you see a black family, it says they're looting. See a white family, it says they're looking for food. To this. If you look, the, the guy's knee wasn't even on his neck like that. And he went from this to this. And now he has aligned himself with folks that want to set fire to the entire black race. Yes, Candace Owens does the bidding of racist white people. Where was Kanye when Sandra Bland turned up dead? What has he said about Breonna Taylor? What has he said about Ahmaud Arbery? What did he say about the racist attacks about the first black female Supreme Court justice, Katandi Brown Jackson? Where is he on all these issues? Here's some black issues I know where he stands on. Apparently white lives matter, slavery was a choice. Oh, George Floyd didn't die under the knee of Derek Chauvin because a movie that Candace Owens put out, which I didn't watch, made that claim. And yes, if you look at the toxicology reports, there was fentanyl in the man's system, talk about George Floyd and methamphetamines. But the medical examiner said it was not even enough to cause a death. He had a, something like 11 nanograms, which if you was a heavy drug user, they say that's almost like going through withdrawal, how little that he had in his system. It wasn't fentanyl that killed him. We all, the entire world watched a man be tortured, for over nine minutes under the knee of a police officer sworn to protect that man instead he murdered him. A jury found that man guilty of murder. Guilty. The evidence said this man was guilty. The medical examiner said he died from asphyxiation. He didn't have enough air. He couldn't breathe. Which is something that coincidentally he kept repeating. And you're going to stay in this man's memory? By claiming that I didn't see what I saw on that video? That's what you're doing? Why? Why all of a sudden, out of everything that's going on in your life, you're losing your wife? Not able to see your kids? This sucker Pete Davidson getting your kids' names tatted on his neck? And you want to bring George Floyd's name into this? And y'all think I'm supposed to cape for this guy? 
That we as black people will be fighting for this dude because he got canceled. He's supposed to be a billionaire or close to a billionaire. A billionaire can't get it together. A guy with $500 million can't figure this out. Didn't Sway tell him to get his own? Yeah. And then he went begging to Adidas, begging the Gap, begging to Balenciaga, begging to Louis. And now when you open your mouth, you fumbled the bag. Now you want help from us? Nah, chief. It's a dub. All y'all online talking about Kanye need to build his own factory. How you making $43,000 a year? You. Telling a man that's got $500 million what the answer to expanding his enterprise is? Don't you think he know how to do that? What's the reason he not? I don't got time to think about it. And then you just pulled up at Skechers? Skechers. Everybody like, oh, that's the trick. He, he had to say that so we can get out the contracts. Man, look. Y'all disappoint me. Let me tell you something. Candace Owens is aligned with the right wing of the Republican Party. People like Tom Cotton, Matt Gates, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Andy Biggs, these guys who hate black people or at the very least are very apathetic to the conditions that black people have to live under and don't want to do anything to try to make it better. That's who Kanye has aligned himself with. People that hate us. That's who Kanye is aligned with. But anytime you want to say anything about the true condition of black people, if you want to teach that in school, they want to call that CRT, critical race theory, and they make it a pejorative. Do you believe that your child should learn and other children in your child's classroom should learn about systemic racism? Do you believe systemic racism exists? Candace Owens does not. This is who Kanye West has aligned himself with. Why should I jump off the bridge with that dude? He's done nothing for the past six, eight months, year, two years, but disregard the average black person. For my white people out there, it's all love. My Hispanics, black, white, Asian, this is not us against them. I'm sick of reading my timeline with all these black folks talk about Kanye exposed something that nobody knew. Everything that Kanye said, was that something you had never heard before? He had to know saying what he said was going to lead to the result that it led to. When he was making beats for Jay-Z, he know who ran the industry, whoever that might be. I'm not in it. I don't know. All those meetings that he had in rooms that you and I cannot get into, he knew who was in those rooms. He saw Hov's ascent to mega stardom. He knew what was behind it, but you still decided to sign up and play ball. Now, yeah, does he have some mental health issues? Probably. It's probably deeper than that. They probably have some kind of control over him and they're losing it. Who? I don't know. Somebody. And now he's rebelling. But I don't give you a pass because you didn't take your meds or because the cabal got you under some type of mind control. I don't. But it could be your uncle, your sister, your niece, your auntie who gets killed unceremoniously in police custody. It could be you. And I guess you would hope that somebody go out there and say something. That somebody goes out there and marches on your behalf. That somebody demands justice for your death or the death of your loved ones or your friends. You would hope that. But apparently you forget that you're black. When you want me to align myself with a dude who could give a fuck about black people and what black people are going through. Who would align himself with the same people that would like to see us dead just for being black. That's not all white people. That's racist white people. And while you're wasting all your time bitching on Twitter about somebody that already sold you out, you should be making some noise about Tiffany Cross. Who's Tiffany Cross? Beautiful black sister, MSNBC, Saturday morning show, two hours, highest rated African-American cable news show behind Al Sharpton. And MSNBC, four days before the midterm elections, decided to abruptly let her go. And what did she do to get fired from MSNBC? This. Florida lo literally looks like the dick of the country, so let's get rid of Florida. Um, Ron, yeah, are you I saying castrate the dick yeah, of the country? Seriously, let's castrate Florida. Here's the problem. Ron is stupid, Ron DeSantis, whatever you want to call Florida man, he is so problematic. The people there passed Amendment 4, which gave returning citizens, those in formerly incarcerated, the right to vote. He instituted a poll tax. He has done everything he can to keep black and brown people from the ballot. Mm -hmm. He traffics in stupidity and ignorance, and I just think they are a problem for the rest of the country. Let's get them out of it. Now, when you think about all the things that Trump said, because according to everybody that votes for Trump, it's not the mean tweets, the stuff that he says, some of it is jokes, don't take it too serious, it's, it's, it's more important what he's doing for the economy, which he did nothing, where Tucker Carlson can go on TV every night espousing great replacement theory. Do you know what that is? Look it up. Where Megyn Kelly, who was Tiffany Cross's nemesis, had the nerve to say, It has to change. You know, I mean... Jesus yeah. was a white man too, but you, you know, it's like, 
we have, he was a historical figure. I mean, that's a verifiable fact, as is Santa. I just want right. the kids watching to know that. Yes. But my point is, how do you just revise it, you know, in the middle of the legacy of the story and change Santa from white to black? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't. Tommy Tuberville said, They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. They are not owed that. Now see, the conversation in this country about reparations is about black people. So what is you saying, Tommy Tuberville? So Tiffany Cross said that, gone, in a day. Where is all y'all on Twitter caping for Tiffany Cross? A black woman who stand 10 toes down has always supported the black community to give us information, to champion our wants and our needs. This is how Tiffany gets down. All while benefiting from the work that we do. We're quite used to it. But when it comes to us, Sister, stop punching above your weight. You keep asking for this smoke that you really don't want. You want to act like a high school mean girl and you'll get treated that way. Sit down, be humble, while our left stroke keeps going viral. Let the grown women speak. You're not invited to this table. You don't have the range. And we just going to let them take that off the air without saying nothing. They did the same thing to Melissa Harris Perry. And Joy Reid better watch her back. Name me all the black anchors in cable news. They got rid of Melissa Harris Perry. They got rid of Tiffany Cross. And we wasting our time screaming to the mountaintop about how Kanye got treated unfairly. Why? Because the guy made a couple of dope albums a long time ago. Miss me with that. Get your priorities straight. And how about supporting those that support us and quit with the fucking idol worship? So anybody that disagrees with what I got to say, hit me up in the comment section right now. Tell me how you feel. And if you want to come on and argue with me about it, I might even have you on. Hashtag I stand with Tiffany Cross. Hashtag fuck yay. I'm Mike Powers. I'm out. What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers.